In our modern world of video games, the analog stick is still easily one of the most important aspects of the console gaming experience. From movement to orientation and even combat, the analog stick will certainly be a difficult feature to replace, and especially for those of us born after the late 90s, it's hard to imagine a world where analog sticks don't exist. So how did they get so popular, and when did they start to matter? This is a Lost Saint video, and today, we'll be looking at the origins of the analog stick. The first exact use of analog sticks is very debatable. Sure, Nintendo may have been the first to truly popularize them, more on this later, but we can trace the first use of analog sticks in a console to approximately 1976 with the 1292 Advanced Programmable Video System. This primitive mouthful of a video game console featured a single, non-centering analog stick to control its games and sprites. It was heavily cloned across Europe and, though it wasn't the most memorable video game system, it has its place in history with its early use of the analog stick. Quick fact, an analog stick differs from other controls like the classic arcade joystick in many ways. While other joysticks and fight sticks may allow for a wide range of movements, they all operate through a set of switches and currents that are activated when the stick is moved in a certain direction, similar to a D-pad. Analog sticks, however, are constantly sending electrical signals through devices called potentiometers that pinpoint the exact position of the analog stick, rather than using switches at specific directions, allowing for more freedom and choice of direction, movement, and even intensity. The 1980s saw a rise in the usage of analog sticks, most significantly in consoles like the Atari 5200. While the console was the first by Atari to feature an analog stick, it was often pretty unreliable, and games were a lot less playable due to the controller's odd keypad design. Like, what the shit is this? Is this thing a phone? Like, what is all this for? Is it like talking to intergalactic space aliens, flying fuckernauts or astral bastards? Its small size also didn't help players at all, as it would wobble all over the place while gaming. However, this setback wouldn't stop the rise of other analog joysticks which also presented themselves in the 80s on consoles like the Vectrex, as well as in arcade cabinets like 1985's Space Harrier by Sega, which utilized an analog joystick for both flight movement and combat. However, console games at the time were primarily 2D and didn't necessarily require the added precision analog sticks offered. However, this wouldn't stop companies from trying to utilize a similar concept. The NES Max controller from 1988, while not using an analog stick, provided a circular thumbstick that still bears some resemblance to modern controllers of today. You could move it around and switch directions smoothly, though the circular D-pad above it was still used a pretty good amount. The controller of the Neo Geo CD console that would be released years later also had a similarly designed thumbstick. There was also a controller released for the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive depending on where you're from, that also contains an analog stick with the option of choosing between analog and regular digital input. The XE1AP, released by the Japanese company Dempa, is strange to say the least as it even has a sole rotating analog slider that could be used to control things like throttle in a racing game. While the releases of these controllers aren't necessarily too important to the history of video games, they do still serve as indicators of what was soon to come in the near future of gaming. As console gaming entered the 1990s, it was clear that the age of 3D was approaching. The PlayStation would release in 1994, and with its revolutionary 3D graphics, it would utilize the D-pad and shoulder buttons for navigation and orientation. In 1995, Nintendo announced their new console, the Nintendo 64, and unveiled its new controller as well. As I said earlier, the Nintendo 64 controller sparked the industry's interest in the manufacturing and release of analog thumbsticks. Funny enough, however, while the N64 does basically what all analog sticks do, they weren't really analog, more than they were digital. Instead of using potentiometers, they still relied heavily on a mechanical design similar to the technology used in trackball mice at the time. Nevertheless, the trend really began here, and upon the announcement of their new controller, Sega and Sony followed suit. In 1996, Sega would release the 3D control pad which, funny enough, would end up coming out before the N64, releasing the controller with the game Nights into Dreams with the intention of using its analog controls for the game's flight mechanics. Sony, however, had a much different approach to the rise of analog controls. 
Even before the announcement and release of the Nintendo 64, Sony announced the PlayStation Analog Joystick, the first controller of its time to truly feature dual analog controls complete with its use of potentiometers. Though the analog controller wasn't fully compatible with a number of PlayStation 1 games, it still performed especially well with flight games like the Ace Combat series. Following the releases of both the N64 and the Sega 3D control pad, Sony, whose primary controllers still lacked analog controls, released the Dual Analog Controller. Not to be confused with the DualShock, the Dual Analog Controller was the first of its generation to feature two concave analog thumbsticks as well as three settings to choose from digital, analog, and analog flight stick, which would emulate the controls of the aforementioned analog joystick controller. However, this model would soon be discontinued, as the iconic DualShock featuring rubberized analog sticks, vibration, and the clickable L3 and R3 buttons would replace it within a year. While the design may have seemed slightly gimmicky at the time due to the given number of games that didn't utilize the right analog stick, it was still a design that successfully caught on. And thus, the age of 3D video games and analog sticks were upon us. Pretty much every major home console release since the N64 would then utilize analog controls. Every iteration of the PlayStation and Xbox has since featured dual analog sticks, while some consoles like the Nintendo Wii and the fallen Sega Dreamcast featured a single analog stick. Though, the rest of Nintendo's home consoles too featured the dual analog design. Handheld consoles would later follow suit, with the PSP being the first to include an analog stick, followed by the 3DS and the Vita's dual analog setup. Analog sticks are more important to gaming than a lot of us may realize, but I personally don't see enough videos on this website that talk about where they came from and how they became so popular. Until we truly master the art of motion controls, Mama! whatever the hell is in the Steam controller, or some other form of input that can match the effectiveness of an analog stick, one thing is for sure. The analog stick was and pretty much still is a revolution that still continues to thrive and help gamers today. This has been a Lost Saint video. I hope you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. For more history videos about games or tech, hit that button below. Take care guys, and thank you for watching.